Hello and welcome. My name's Super Saiyan and this will be my in-depth look at the brand new Warhammer 40,000 9th edition Indomitus box set from Games Workshop. They've just had a kind of live stream on their Twitch and on this Warhammer community uh, website and I thought I'd uh, take the time to look through uh, this box and all of the contents completely separate from my, my usual uh, news and pre-order video because I think it deserves its own video um, because it's pretty big, pretty big news. We'll have a look at the box and what's included. We'll look at what's beyond the box and we'll also look at beyond beyond the box. We'll go through uh, all the other models um, that they didn't show today and Warhammer 40,000 moving forward. Right, so firstly, you can find uh, all the news on the Warhammer Community web site uh, where I typically get mine. Of course, uh, every Sunday, probably about four or five o'clock, and um, sometimes earlier, the Warhammer community also posts on here uh, what is up for pre-order uh, next weekend. They've just announced this. I'm not sure whether it will be up for pre-order next weekend, uh, but they have said that they've made shed load of these boxes, but they are in limited supply. That's interesting. More often than not, I see their box sets or um, limited runs of things get sold out pretty quickly. I don't think this is going to be any different. I think that this will be extremely popular. The new Necrons look fantastic and the new Space Marines look pretty awesome too. Now it's worth noting that this isn't a brand new starter set. It's not a starter game set. It is mainly just a box set full of uh, new miniatures um, for you know vet veterans of the hobby uh, as such. They said that uh, this set will include the miniatures uh, at a discount. They say it's 50% off uh, buying all these at a discount. So if they've said that and they've said it, they have said it in writing, what we're going to do is when this box set comes out, we're going to divide it by all the uh, units and things and um, have a little prediction. That'll be a separate video of how much uh, we think that these will be uh, based on, on this uh, box set. Anyway, enough of my waffling. Uh, let's have a look. So we just click on lifting the lid and we have a little look at this. So it seems like this will be the box. It's got the uh, Space Marine Primaris uh, blade guard on here with uh, Necron Warrior. If we go down here, you've got the Primaris uh, Lieutenant. Still a twitch thing going on I think uh, so this is the box set I've got a little bit of music going on a video of everything that's in the in the set the bikes the blade guard the new warriors the chaplain uh, the intercessor assault intercessors And the rest of the models. Um, nice little ancient there. The captain, chaplain, and the big, big hardback rule book. Almost 400 pages, I think 366 they were talking about. So there you go. So that is uh, like a little video uh, that you can see. This is the, the picture, which you can see um, nine separate units per side. You've got the Ancient, you've got these uh, new, um, looks like Grav Gravis Armoured um, Primaris called the Eradicators. Uh, you've got the Judicia, uh, you've got the Chaplain, you've got the Captain, you've got the uh, Lieutenant, you've got the Blade Guard, you've got the Assault Intercessors, and you've got the Outriders. Then Necron side of things, you've got the Overlord, the Scarabs, two sets of warriors and then a few other units that I don't really I'm not really sure about um, names wise so we'll we'll have a look at them in a moment uh, but moving down this is the captain he's got part of his primaris helmet up and the necron warrior that's been severed at the waist uh, amazing looking shield um, loads of detail on that uh, really really cool cool model moving down you've got the lieutenant and with a uh, mastercrafted power sword 
and a storm shield and a neo volkite pistol uh, which Belisarius Cole has um, tinkered with the volkite weapons and uh, this is what they've come up with looks amazing I'm not too sure about this big holster though for it but um, maybe it would be better if that was behind him or to the side because it just looks a bit odd having that big chunk I mean that one's fine but that one it just looks a bit odd uh, then you've got the chaplain in classic chaplain pose uh, I like this uh, nod there um, it's got like a adamantium skull almost um, with the absorber bolt pistol uh, pretty awesome then you've got the uh, judicia I'm still not getting the, the whole head helmet thing I still don't know which, which starts and which ends uh, maybe it is a helmet but it's got this massive looking uh, blade called uh, an executioner relic blade um, and is able to cut down foes with that quite odd with it being blunted off at the top uh, but still a really cool looking model love these um, greaves as well then you've got the blade, blade guard veterans which again these big pistol holster things look a bit, bit odd uh, they've got heavy bolt pistols though in those no um, neo volkite pistols but the shields look absolutely amazing I uh, wonder if we will get terminators, primaris terminators or primaris in terminator armor it's going to be interesting isn't it then you've got blade guard ancient which oddly enough doesn't have a uh, storm shield uh, but uh, following in the steps, footsteps of the uh, imagifier I think both of them are just beautiful models I think that they look well together and uh, he's he's got a uh, hand maybe it's a skeleton key maybe I don't know um, they've said that he's going to be pretty handy in a fight uh, it's just a odd it's just weird it's just strange it's an odd choice of thing to have him hold <laughs> rather than a normal pistol I like it because it's so sort of out there but um, yeah it's, it's hard to get used to the fact that he's holding a hand uh, and then the eradicators look very very cool you've got this uh You've got the Gravis armor, good use of the Gravis armor here. The, these two look almost the same. I mean, I know their head's in the same position and the weapons are exactly the same, but they're in slightly different poses, unless this one has been moved a bit. But he just seems like he's leaning back. At first glance, I thought that they were exactly, you know, they, they were twins, but they're not. And then you've got this guy uh, without the helmet, just lowered his weapon. I do like this, this grip on the top. It's, uh, yeah, a little bit odd, but... Uh, basically long-ranged melter uh, rifles um, yeah melter rifles and then you've got the assault intercessor squad and this is where it sort of I say is let down a bit these are probably the weakest models in my opinion um, but they've got these big chain swords and one of the reasons is because twins you, you only get five unique um, only five of them are, are unique um, I don't know whether they've got helmetless versions, I don't think they have, I think this is what you get, but it, it's very obvious that this model here is this one. Uh, this guy, the sergeant, they put him right next to a model that looks um, just like him, but the weapon loadouts are different, if you can see. He's got the bolt pistol and a hand arm outstretched, and the sergeant has got the, what looks to me like a plasma pistol uh, and a chain sword. But this one here is exactly the same as that. And I think that, that kind of detracts it a little bit um, from, from the rest of the box set. But at least you've got these two which are different and then you've got um, all the other sort of twins. The Outriders, uh, it's great that they are all different. Uh, this one's leaning a bit to the right. Um, this one's got his chainsaw out. Uh, this, I want to say, is this, this sergeant because he's got the red helmet. Um, he's aiming that bolt pistol. Looks really cool. Uh, I I do like those. Um, they've got. I I initially thought that they were uh, heavy bolters, but they're not. It's just paired bolt rifles. Um, so they've only got the bolt rifles and the uh, chain swords and the um, bolt pistols. So that's a, a an in depth look at the the new um, Primera Space Marine models. I think they're really really strong. Uh, I like the eradicators, I like the, the single miniatures, 
Um, I like the blade guard, uh, other than the massive um, pistol holsters. And yeah, these single miniatures are, are beautiful too. Uh, I have to give it to the captain though. Um, holding that shield like he is with the Necron, I just think that's the uh, most fantastic model. Uh, but the lieutenant is looking very, very nice. Probably one of the best lieutenants uh, we've had. Um, and then moving down, let's go on to the Necrons, which are very, very interesting because Necrons haven't had new models for quite some time. If you want to see a massive Titan-sized, uh, well, actually like a Serastus Titan-sized um, Necron murder spider, scorpion thing, it's one of my most recent videos, and it's called the Necron Seraptek. Um if you just type that into YouTube, you'll most likely get my review, and it is a huge thing, and uh, it will go very well with uh, all, all of these new Necron models. Uh, but this is the new Overlord. I like what they've done with him. Uh, they, they've really kitted him out. Uh, they've put this uh, kind of extra armor back panel onto him that's uh, sort of connected to this, I want to say this uh, sort of range weapon thing that's wrist mounted. It's quite cool, and then he's got this really long um, uh, hyperphase glaive, uh, and uh, it says that this is a tachyon arrow. Um, so I really like what they've done. I like these uh, chains or icons, whatever they are. Um, they look that it, having them in that way it looks like they don't weigh much because they're sort of dangling in the wind, I guess. Then you've got a royal warden, which is. Uh, Basically, you know, you've had lieutenants, now you've got Necron lieutenants. Um, this is the, the is basically the Overlord's um, uh, bodyguard. Uh, he's got a bit of a cape thing going on, and he's got this uh, a relic gauze blaster. And uh, I do like the attention to detail uh, with, the, with this sort of half disintegrated um, skull there. Really, really cool. I like what the... It's it's just way better than just having just a normal skull, and that is going to be part of that base. Um, they've even said a Swiss stripe on the on the skull head, so he's he's kind of like a lieutenant wannabe in a way. Then you've got this new model, which they say is kind of like a wizard, a plasmancer, um, just hovering about, I guess. And uh, it's got this sheath. You've got this um, little mechadendrite. You've got this uh, long spine blade thing, tail blade, with a really long chin. <laughs> And uh, it's got one of these, looks like it's a melee and um, long range weapon. Uh, it says it's got a, it's got a plasmic lance. That's what that is apparently. Uh, but um, I think he will buff your, your units a little bit. Then you've got the, the murder buckets, the crypto thralls. Uh, they just look like, they do just look like a bucket with, a robot that's jumped out of them. Um, yeah, they're all right, I guess. Probably the weakest out of all of them. Not, I, they haven't really grown on me, these two. Um, then we get this Scorpec Lord. Absolutely amazing. This is just so cool. And I love the legs, and I love how it will fit with the Seraptek. Um, when I first saw these, I, I knew it would. He's got a loads of awesome, awesome weapons. You've got this and mythic annihilator uh, and then a hyperphase harvester and then a flensing claw right there uh, amazing amount of weaponry uh, on this this bad boy looks so so cool and then if that wasn't enough you've got the scorpec destroyers as well which all carry these um hyperphase threshers uh or reap blades um i don't think They've got anything ranged on them. I mean, these kind of look like the ends of ranged weapons. Um, but it does specifically say that they um, they scuttle forwards into combat to murder their prey rather than gunning them down from afar. So maybe there is some kind of ranged weapon on that, but I, I, but quite highly, but likely there won't be. Moving down, you've got this plasma sight, uh, which is this weird kind of thing with a proboscis sort of. Uh, I like the little um, scarab there as well. It's on some nice scenery. Really cool miniature. Um, they sort of drift, drift, drift amongst the uh, destroyers, and they will uh, infuse the destroyers 
to make him even more deadly. And then you've got this uh, War of the Worlds type model, like a smaller version, a Canoptic uh, Reanimator. It will most likely do as its uh, as its name namesake, which will uh, reanimate your your Necron warriors um, at a molecular level, and also it's got an atomizer uh, beam lances as well on the top. Really cool. I like the shared aesthetic with all the legs and the spine with the Seraptech. The only difference with this one is that it's got a load of battle damage and things on it, um, which is fair enough. The Seraptech doesn't. There's nothing stopping you from um, putting that on yourself. And then you've got the Canoptech uh, Scarab Swarms. I do spot that there are three sets of twins here. Uh, this one here and this one are exactly the same. This one and this one. And finally, this one and this one. So you're getting three unique Scarab Swarms. I'm not sure whether you can mix and match these individually. I think that is they just come as like one. Um, but uh, yeah, really, really nice take on them and uh, way better than uh, they used to. They've got sort of individual little legs and things now. And then finally we come to the Necron Warriors. Uh, you get 20 in, in the box here and uh, you can have shorter ranged, uh, harder hitting Gorse Reapers, which are these bad boys. And then you've also got the uh, traditional Gorse uh, Flayers. Um, so two different types. I really like the look of them. They're all you know, a little bit different. Some have uh, jaws missing, some have cobbled together, got different eyes, sockets, some have cables dangling, um, the little scarab, I think it is, just hiding behind him. That's that's really, really cool. Looking at them from face value, I can't see that they are, um, that, that any are the same. Looking at their leg poses as well, uh, it's difficult to see uh, which, the, which leg poses are, are the same. Even the, I would have liked to have seen a few of them with more of a aiming the weapon uh, pose because it looks like there's only two uh, that are doing that. Um, but apart from that, they're really good looking models, I think. And then finally, you get the uh, the core book. Uh, it says Indomitus Edition. So this is the Indomitus Edition of the uh, rule book um, because you get it in the Indomitus uh, box. It doesn't exactly say how many pages there are, um, but there most likely will be almost 400 pages or so. Uh, and then you get this little um, uh, booklet here called The Edge of Silence. And uh, it's it's not only got all of the data sheets, you've got the law, uh, which the Indomitus box is, is uh, based around. And then uh, you get the instruction guide, which covers all of the models there. Um, so 18 different units in total, a uh, big transfer sheet, and then they don't show it there, but um, there is there is also a book called Indomitus uh, as well, um, uh, a novel, uh, which I think is in the uh, Beyond the Box um, article, which we're going to have a look at right now. So that's the box. It outlines that there are 61 push fit miniatures. So when it says push fit miniatures, I, I'm sort of guessing that you don't have to use glue. Um, so it does seem a bit odd that they've chosen this tact. Uh, I would have thought that uh, that's harder to do and more time consuming to make the models push fit um, because you don't need glue. And I do question why, why they've done it push fit. If this isn't a starter set, it might have been easier for them not to have to have them as, as push fit. Who knows? Um, but they've decided to go down that route. They also highlight uh, that uh, the models will save you 50% over the getting the content separately. So therefore, uh, under that assumption, they will be releasing all of these models separately. I don't think they'll be releasing all these models separately alongside the box set though. Um, they don't do that usually. And uh, I do wonder when uh, these models will, will be out separately as well. Because if you don't have any inkling at all, uh, any interest in the Necron side of things, and you just want the Blade Guard, or you just want a Judicia, um, then I hope that Games Workshop don't leave you waiting for too long before you're, you're able to pick them up. I hope they don't do what they have done in the past, which is release this box set, then release all these other extra new models, and then eventually release both of these sets in you know, larger box sets, in their own box sets or, or something like that. That, that would be um, a little bit disappointing. Anyway, that's everything that you get in the box. Uh, it doesn't say how much it is. I'm going to hazard a guess with 61 miniatures there uh, that it's going to be with that with that hardback book as well. I'd say 125, 
maybe 150. It's going to be very interesting though. Um, you know, that hardback book is usually about 30, 35 pounds. Uh, so let's, let's uh, maybe they will announce this um, soon. Or maybe they won't announce the price at all until they actually have it up on uh, pre-order. They've said that they've made boatloads um, and they will uh, email you um, once it's up, up for pre-order. Uh, so that's all we can really hope for. Now, moving on to beyond the box uh, part of this video, which is something that I wanted to do on top of it. So these are some models that are coming out uh, later on. Again, there's another video showcasing some of them with this funky looking Invader ATV, all-terrain vehicle, if you weren't already indoctrinated in uh, the confusing world of acronyms. Um, but it looks like here uh, you've got an onslaught Gatling cannon or you can have a multi-melter. Way the multi-melter hasn't gone away. Wouldn't it also be cool to have some kind of plasma incinerator or I, I don't know, maybe it's too hot next to the that Primaris's head, a bit interesting, sort of cover your ears kind of thing, but then again, that helmet would definitely dampen any any sounds of gunfire. Uh, got the bolt rifles there, which is what you'd expect. It looks odd, uh, I have to say. They, they're kind of, it, it does look a bit odd. You've got this small um, firing shield here with a very small slit. I don't know why that slit couldn't have been all the way uh, across or even more central to where the the barrels are now this is me nitpicking i'm really really nitpicking uh also no protection for the tires <laughs> at all um you know what happens you get a puncture you get a bullet you get an ex shrapnel in one of those and then i don't know do, do they self self inflate uh with all this grav technology around and things i was really surprised to see uh them going backwards uh, with wheeled vehicles. Uh, they had, I had so much promise with um, this new repulsor technology with repulsor grav tanks that we keep hearing about. You've got it on the Astraeus tank, you've got it on uh, the repulsors, the impulsors, um, you know, and then when we do get bikes, which a lot of people wanted and I wanted, uh, they go back to um, tires. And that just seems a bit odd. If we're if we're getting you know neo Volkite weapons, and Belisarius is is uh, working on uh, is coming up with all these new technologies and things, why why do we then go back to tires? <laughs> it's just really odd. I, I could have expected some kind of mini uh, repulsor, um, oh, maybe like a I don't know land speeder type thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the uh, invader. I'm prepared to be invaded uh, with a multi melter or a onslaught Gatling cannon. It's it's, it's almost like a, a funky uh, attack bike, really. Yeah, it's a huge replacement for the attack bike. Then you've got this most immobile piece of weaponry I've seen for a while. At least the Thunderfire cannon. You could, you know, it was remote control, you could wheel it about some places, and, and even the quad batteries that uh, the Legion, Space Marine Legions had, and um, they were really cool and funky. Uh, but this just seems like a static heavy weapon platform. It doesn't speak angels of death to me, you know, streaming down into drop pods, teleporting directly into a command bunker or whatever. This just seems like Imperial Guard. This just seems like Astra Militarum to me. Not the kind of shock and awe that I, I would expect. But it has a, either a twin accelerator auto cannon or twin LAS Talon. Good luck with the LAS Talon because it's only 24 inch range. <laughs> I would definitely go for the accelerator auto cannon. Uh, it, it looks like it is aiming down. So maybe this they've put this on a sort of a higher level plateau or something. Also, it must be really good against flyers. Um, so static weapon platform for these flyers. So this could be a cheap version of an anti-flyer um, weaponry. You know, those accelerator auto cannons uh, must be pretty decent range as well. Anyway, so this is your uh, brand new Fire Strike servo turret. Then let's move on to the Necrons. Now this thing looks amazing. I love these uh, these big oversized thrusters that it's got. I love the battle damage all over the place. And uh, yeah, um, 
heavy in heavy destroyers. You've got advanced optics now, and you've got these uh, weapons called the Enmitic Exterminators. That just sounds, you know, just just all science fiction is going on here. It's amazing. Um, these rain, these weapons must be horrific long range weapons. Uh, and then moving on to another incredible looking miniature is this Canoptech Doomstalker. I love the way that they called it. You know. It, I love how they've used that name as well. Stalk, like a plant, like a stalk, but then they've made it grimmed up. I call it Doom. It's a Doom Stalk, you know, Doom Stalker. Uh, and uh, they they explain that it's it's uh, one of Necron's heaviest weapons, this bad boy right here. It's called a Doomsday Blaster. Um, it can be fired on the move as well, or they can remain stationary to unleash its full cataclysmic potential. Get too close and then you've got the auxiliary twin gorse flayers as well. That's nice that it's got a bit of point defense on it. Um, I wonder what the toughness is, I wonder what the shielding is for this thing. I love the legs that they share those aesthetics with the Zoraptek, absolutely fantastic. Not a big fan of the cabling, I think that's a bit poor in my opinion, it's not needed. The Zoraptek doesn't have the cabling, It, it yeah, on each leg as well. If I can get away with not putting that on, I will. I don't know why they they done that. That just seems odd. Um, it would have been fine without it. It really would have. We we would have, you know, you know, the cabling here to that that weaponry, that gauze weaponry, would be would have been sufficient. Um, I'm not sure about these pistons as well. Whether they're needed, but there we go. Um, but yeah, I really, really like the look of this thing. Amazing, very tall, love the scenic base. That is a must buy for me. And then finally, the in Indomitus novel. Here it is by Gav Thorpe. Um, looks quite a chunky one. Uh, this is a must buy. If you're gonna get this box set and if you're gonna get these new models and invest uh, into all this, this book uh, will be the one. Gav does do a, a very good job um, with the 40K novels as well, so it's in safe hands. Um, and that's pretty much it for all of the previews and things that were up um, this weekend uh, on Saturday 13th of June. So there we go. Moving on though, let's have a look at the other models that they still haven't uh, released any articles or any news about or they didn't talk in this this uh, you know box set preview. Yes, it was just mainly about the box, but it was nice to see some new models that we've never even seen before. Let's go and have a look at uh, this amazing picture, uh, which I've shown on the channel before. Um, we've we've seen this model now. We've seen this one. Um, we've seen this uh, wizard type bloke. So we can cross a few of these off our list now. Um, you know this this one here um, will come in the box set. This Overlord is not new. That was in the Forge Bane uh, kit. However, there are still three, potentially four models that we've have never seen before. I'm not sure about this one. I think it's just a Triarch Stalker. However, this thing here, this Catan or whatever he is, is is, abs is absolutely amazing. Um, a little bit of Age of Sigma, Sigmarite type uh, thing going on, but I love the crackling energy around the, the rocks and the boulders and things. I love this, maybe it's the Silent King. Um, that is just an absolute stunning model. I love that, uh, it's got these um, shielding things, whatever they are, and they're on separate bases, but they'll no doubt come with this this model. Uh, so they're two big, big models that um, they haven't really talked too much about. And then the other massive, ridiculous elephant in the room is the new uh, Necron Monolith or Hyper Monolith or whatever it is. It looks absolutely insane and uh, can't wait to see some articles and uh, see this. Also, you've got some Necron scenery, I think, in the background. It may be separate kits, who knows? Um, it would be very nice to get uh, some scenery in this uh, new release. Um, and we've also already seen this Doomstalker uh, in the preview. That'll be another big, big model. So you've got one, two, three, four big models there um, uh, with uh, with these three still have articles. And they're, they're just the things that they've, they've shown. There might be other models that they, uh, haven't shown yet um, because uh, according to this article beyond the box we've seen this um, heavy destroyer and we've seen the uh, doomstalker and um, you know looking forward to the articles on those other miniatures 
Anyway, that is it for my in-depth uh, look at uh, the what's in the box, beyond the box, and moving forward beyond beyond the box. Uh, hopefully you found that of some use. I know some of you may not have been able to uh, join in the, the live uh, video for whatever reason. And also, I understand many of you just prefer my videos and prefer me talking about all these models and, and my take on them and bringing uh, my 20 plus years of uh, this hobby experience um, to you all. Uh, if you've got any questions and things, please do put them in the comments below. As always, what do you guys think? It'd be great if you could put in the comment section your favourite new Primaris model and your favourite new Necron model out of everything that we've seen so far. Mine has to be the new Captain uh, for the Primaris, even though I do like the bikes. And my favourite Necron model, from the box set at least, has to go for the Scorpec Lord. Absolutely love him. The close second is the Reanimator, uh, but I really like uh, uh, the Scorpec Lord. Absolutely fantastic. But they're my two favourite models anyway. What do you guys think? Please do put all your thoughts and opinions down below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.